morning, everybody, and welcome back for another episode. I've got a haircut, which is nice. Thank you, Kim. Um, one of the biggest questions I've been receiving all week, um, lots and lots of concerns and all that stuff about what I mean by replacement windows and why I'm doing that at all. Uh, let me walk you through a few things and show you, A, why I'm choosing who I'm choosing to do it, what I'm actually replacing, and why I'm doing it. So let's go ahead and get into that first today before we get into any work. So let me show you. One of the first things I wanna show you guys is, A, I'm missing lots and lots of glass. Uh, or maybe not a lot, but quite a bit. And there's a lot of replacement panes as well. Um, so some of this stuff is wavy glass. Um, you know, like for instance, this one up here, wavy glass. This one down here, not wavy glass. Um, so there's been a lot of replacement and fixing and all that stuff. And then we get into the issue of this. Now maybe it's a bit hard to see because I'm sure it's super duper backlit, but you can see the gap there. This entire piece here is completely rotten. All the way across, it's bowing like crazy. I couldn't lock this window if I wanted to. It's extremely messed up. So, you know, these weren't taken care of. I mean, you can see the glass and the wood aren't even connected anymore because that entire piece is dropped and it's missing a bunch of it. So, that shot, I mean, I don't know what, I mean, I suppose you could find some old pine, some old growth pine and repair that. Yeah, sure, or you could repair it with modern material, sure. Neither of which would match. So, you know, and that's just one window in here. This one, over here on this side, actually, this coving pattern or this pattern here doesn't actually match up here. It looks close and it is somewhat close, but one of these two windows is an original, uh, which I'm assuming this is the original because I've seen this pattern further over, but see how this is more shallow here and this part here is actually smaller than this here. So one of those two isn't, and I'm pretty sure the bottom's original and that's not. So there's already been some replacement, some redoing and stuff like that. Also, when I'm talking about the windows, I'm only replacing the sashes. So just this and this. The guy who's doing it, um, this company, it's called St. Louis Sash. It's a, a guy and his son who do it. They work on antique equipment and uh, they do a spectacular job. They've built doors and windows for the Campbell House. They've worked on many, many, many projects and their stuff is simply put incredible. They're really good at what they do. They really care for this house. Um, you know, like I said, like they have a, a Holland Brown table saw. These new sashes that are getting made are getting made on the guy who built the house's equipment. Uh, like some of the other stuff I get to do, uh, like the, the Mansard's gonna be built that way. Uh, not by these guys, but other people because people collect their machinery and they still use it. Um, you know, the, the windows won't look any different, but the difference is they will be uniform. So now into one of the nicer rooms. Um, the other problem with wavy glass is like this piece here is cracked, it's broken. And this is for my Jefferson window. And you see how big that piece of glass is? It goes all the way to the floor. So sourcing a piece of wavy glass that big is really difficult. And again, right here is a good example. This piece here, you can see this little like dot here, this is all wavy glass, but the paint right next to it is not. This is standard, basic, modern glass. It's flat, it's crystal clear. So even in the same sash here, wavy, not wavy. So going through and sourcing all of the glass, it's, it's tricky because there's a few companies that make it still, but it would probably triple or at least double the cost of anything I did in this house window wise, because it's just, these are pretty large panes, and to find enough of it or to get it made is just, well, <laughs> somebody put guys, I'm not a rich man. <laughs> um, same thing in here. These windows, they're all okay. Like, they're not terrible. They could be reworked, right? But then this one over here is broken. We have this all coming apart. You can see they've put a metal bracket there just to hold it all together. Um, and then, let's see if this will focus. Yeah, you can see how it's dropped down. The wood is, I mean, it's beat up, guys. It's really beat up. It's completely falling apart here. 
Essentially, that's what I mean by end of their service life. A lot of these guys haven't been taken care of. I know some of you guys have houses from you know the early 1800s and your windows are fine or they've been remade or they've, you've got them back to where you need them to be. And that's awesome. Like I would be ecstatic if that were a, a better possibility for me here, you know, like that'd be amazing. But a lot of these are really, really beat up and a lot of them aren't original. Let me show you the entire first floor and what I mean by them not being original in the house. Now here I am back on the first floor in the parlor. You see the windows, wonderful, wonderful, right? Like nothing looks too out of place. But then you look closer to the windows and realize, oh wait, those aren't wood. Those are aluminum and double paned aluminum. Whole thing, the entire first floor has been completely replaced. Now luckily they didn't screw with any of the woodwork and I'm hoping that, you know, pieces of the casing and stuff are back in there. That way, I, when I go to replace these, I can just do the sashes with minor fixes. But who knows? I don't, I don't know what's necessarily behind all this. Those are aluminum. Above it, wood. Now, obviously, this looks a whole lot better than this. So, I, wanna, I have to replace all this. And I'm hoping to keep all of the casings together, or all the, you know, the surrounds, whatever you call this, the, the frame of the window all together. You see some of them have storm windows in them. Some of them have, I mean, it's, it's a whole mosh podge of stuff. It's, it's different eras trying to fix the same problem. But you see here in the front, these, these four down here, all aluminum. This right here in the back, this is the dining room. And that is the library window I've been working on that you guys saw me strip last week. So you can see like the windows just a bit busted up. Uh, the frame itself isn't in too terrible of condition. I'm going to still have to put some, uh, you know, some, some epoxy probably wood filler around it and, and paint the outside. Now, before anybody goes crazy, these would have all been painted anyways. I can see in the original 1896 photo that these were a dark color, a really dark color. And I'm thinking very dark green. Um, I'm gonna look at some Victorian color charts or late Victorian color charts to see how dark they were actually able to go because it looks really dark in the photo. So, yeah, again, here you guys can see. Aluminum, new window, old window. So that, guys, is the main reason why I have to replace a lot of these windows. You know, I, I don't have all the glass. Um, sourcing the wavy glass is really difficult. I have a lot of rotten uh, sashes and I have sashes that are mix, ma mix matched in the same window. So, you know, it made more sense to go ahead and get new sashes produced. It just did. I, I would have taken a lot of time to repair these things. Uh, I would have had to have sourced old, old wood um, to repair them, which again is possible. You can do it. Um, but it just seemed like, for what reason? I mean, they're gonna be built out of mahogany. They're gonna be beautiful and they're all gonna match. The entire house is gonna match. So it made more sense for me to go that route. If at a later date, I, you know, I, I make more money or, or something happens, I, you know, I'm, I'll replace all the windows uh, again uh, or just take out all the panes of glass and replace them with wavy glass. Um, you know, obviously I want this to look as original as possible. Um, but sometimes guys, people come before you and they make decisions and who knows what these windows look like before. I mean, maybe this was the right decision for them at the time. You know, I've made my decision based on lots of consideration, um, heavy consideration. Um, so I wanted to give you guys a bit of an explanation of why I'm doing that. Um, I will also be filming when I make the windows. Uh, you'll get to see a, a, a Holland Brown t uh, bandsaw in, in use. Um, you know, the guy who's making them, he's an artist. He's really good at his craft. And like I said, he's built windows, replacement windows from many, many historic homes in the city. He's an absolute perfectionist craftsman. He was so excited also when I told him whose house this was because he's a huge fan of, of Hall and Brown. So, you know, it, it, it's, I think it's the right decision, guys. Also, these windows, they don't get tossed in the trash. I'm keeping the windows. Uh, I'm probably gonna put them in the basement for now. So everything that I take out of here, I'm going to keep. I'm gonna try to get every bit of wavy glass out of all the, the pane or all, out of all the sashes. And um, we'll count up, see how much I have, and then how much I need to get in the future if I want to put that back in. Um, 
or if I use it for other projects or, or you know, what, what, whatever have you, you know, like, I'm not about to just chuck these things. I understand the value of them. I've even started digging out, let me show you guys this. These are the original brass poles. So I've taken them out, I've been cleaning them up, and I'm gonna have the guy reinstall them in the new windows, in the new sashes. So again, trying to reuse everything I possibly can to make this work. So hopefully that explains more of what's going on with the windows, guys. And hopefully you guys aren't all too mad with me. So thank you, thank you, and let's get to time lapses. Real quick, I know a few of you guys wanted to know what was in the mysterious bathroom closet. And <laughs> it's not very exciting. <laughs> However, that being said, there's nothing really wrong with it. So essentially we're just gonna use it as it is, you know? So there you go. These tiles in better condition down here, but don't worry, these are linoleum. They're super duper thin and they're not, uh, they're not a problem. They're the same ones that are here. Um, but yeah, we're working on uh, getting the rest of those up. The other ones just kind of fell, fell off. They were not stuck very well. And this is actually some of the trim that's gonna be going pretty soon because after I get everything stripped in the library, the bathroom is next. Um, probably starting with this window. So, also plaster, gotta get this plaster redone. So I'll take this stuff off, take it in the other room, strip it, and uh, we'll be on our merry way.
guys, so that's going to basically be the episode this week. Um, I know it's sunny out and you can kind of see some of the uh, the lights. Uh, I actually have a hockey game tonight, so I have to go do that. Next weekend, I have the entire week off. So uh, lots of work going on next week. The next video should be uh, quite a bit um, more progress, let's say. Um, and uh, I know you guys were all asking about staples, so let me help you guys out with that a little bit. The reason that we have so many staples and windows, such as this one here in the bathroom, as you guys can see, Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of staples all the way up, all the way down. Essentially, the reason they did that is because the windows leak so much air uh, around them. Obviously, not through the glass, but around them. Um, and because they do that, um, when you're cold, and it get, does get cold in the house, um, you know, you'll do anything. You'll, you'll staple plastic to anything. And we found a lot of plastic. As you guys can see in the, the last little shot, there's tons of plastic still there. And uh, that was simply put, yeah, that's, it was a, um, what's somebody call it in the comments? Oh, a redneck storm window, I like, <laughs> I like that. Um, but essentially, yeah, that's what it was. It was to stay warm. Um, yeah, and they just did it and didn't really care about what they were stapling into. Um, yeah, so it's a problem we have to deal with, but uh, it's coming along. We're getting a little bit uh, better at getting the uh, paint off the wood and stuff like that. So it's starting to shape up. So uh, let me show you guys what the woodwork's looking like now after we've gotten a lot of it stripped. Now you guys know before I did this window, right? The thing is with it is I didn't get every little nook and cranny clean. So there's little bits here and there that I'm less than happy with. Where is this window, even though now it's missing its Wonderful for wonderful, wonderful wood, uh, woodwork. Um, this is what we're left with. I've taken it all off, taken it on the table, and we have got it really clean. So these are ready to actually stain and go back up. Of course, I can't do that until I get some plaster work done in here, but yeah, really pretty, really happy with these. Of course, these are a little bit easier than these, which are the plinth blocks or um, I don't actually know, I know the plinths at the bottom, but I don't know what you would call these at the middle and the top. Um, but yeah, as you can see, really, really pretty stuff. Uh, got these, these four all done for the one window. As you can see, we're still working on the other ones over here for the other window. Um, but we're getting close. This is the last piece of trim for that window over there. And so, and then these are the other pieces for that window, which are all 100% done. And yes, I did finally buckle. The, these pieces of, uh, of wood were kind of coming off anyways. And because I had to do so much plaster work up and around here, I mean, you can see all this is, this was actually drywall. So I didn't even take plaster down. You can see the piece of drywall up there still. Uh, and this is still down here, drywall. They just shimmed the wall and, and did this. Um, and of course you can see this stuff here. <laughs> you can see the massive shadow. I guess like my hand back there. So uh, yeah, that's all coming down. Um, and I'm going to do that uh, probably tomorrow. So as you're watching this, I'll probably be dusty and gross in, uh, in plaster hell again, let's say. Um, but yeah, all this basically has to come down. Uh, I'm going to have a guy come out, I hopefully next week, to come assess and uh, estimate how much this is going to cost. Um, and also, uh, I'm hoping, because I have all of next week off, that he can do it and I can watch him do it and learn how to adhere plaster to brick because I don't know how to get it on the masonry and make it stick on masonry. Whereas with the lath, obviously you key it in. Um, so I'm just uh, a little ignorant on the subject of making it stick to brick. So that's that. Part of this wall too is really chunky and messed up. I'm thinking this stripe right here might be uh, a piece of drywall. So that might have to come down. Um, I know there's a piece of drywall up there, which means that has to come down, which means some of this has to come off as well. Um, so yeah, I think most of the trim is going to be done on the table. That ended up being a good uh, setup for us. And uh, I thank you guys for recommending that because uh, that came from you guys. Although I do have to be very careful. This trim is rather delicate and you can crack it or make a crack that's existing worse by pulling on it. So if you come into a situation like this in your own place, just be very, very careful with the trim. You can get more cut but it won't always be this exact wood that you're wanting. I mean, this is very old pine, so, you know, good luck finding it. Um, but yeah, beautiful stuff. And then I do have a few things outside I wanna show you guys too. All right guys, so here outside, I uh, wanted to show you a couple of things. 
A, here's the, uh, the table saw, the top's in my uh, garage, but uh, it's gonna stay out here for a little bit and just until I can get my dumpster moved um, because uh, it's really heavy and I gotta roll it back to my garage way back there. So yeah, a little hard to do that currently. Um, can't find enough bodies, just straight lift it. <laughs> like we got it in the van with a, uh, an engine lift, so it's heavy. And then, as you'll notice, I have a whole stack of old, um, well, two by fours, I guess, but essentially they're they're bigger than that. But uh, really nice, sturdy, big old lumber from an old house here in the city. It's probably a little over 100 years old. Um, and yes, it is sitting outside right now. We're not going to have any rain anytime soon, so just kind of waiting on weather. But uh, I'm going to move this stuff inside. But I'm actually going to build the wall in the bathroom with this stuff. Um, so if uh, you know, you drive by or something and see all this wood. Don't worry, I did not rip this out of the house. This is not from the house, but it's actually gonna be used to re rebuild part of the house. Um, I was lucky enough to get this stuff uh, for free, actually, and um, I think it's fitting to build the new wall upstairs on the third floor for the bathroom in this. So, yeah, pretty nice stuff. If anybody's in need of any track for a pocket door, let me know, I have some. <laughs> So that's pretty much all the excitement for this week, guys. I know it's not a terribly exciting uh, video again, uh, you know, watching paint dry in reverse. Um, but I hope you guys all enjoyed it and uh, I'll catch you guys next week. Like I said, I'll have a lot more work done next week because I have an entire week to do it instead of two or three days. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll see you guys then. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day and bye-bye.